nine years ago when the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Volt, you know, what I call the, the first round of EVs uh, kind of came or hybrids came. Uh, I got involved in the uh, helping companies that are developing uh, new mines in lithium. It was a bit of a false start in 2010 period, uh, but Tesla and Elon Musk with the Gigafactory and the success of Model S and then the Model X and, and now the Model 3 and uh, the, the transformation in China and Europe uh, toward bringing many, many more electric vehicles to market o over the course of uh, you know, the next number of years has led to a massive demand shock to a very small industry, which is lithium. Lithium used to be uh, controlled by three companies, Albemarle, SQM, and FMC, uh, but it, it was only about a one billion revenue market, you know, 200,000 tons a year. That now is forecasted to grow to about a million tons a year by 2025 as a result of both electric cars, but also energy storage for utilities. You spoke about Tesla first and foremost, and you know, that's a big buzzword. But you're, you, in terms of this, we're not actually going to be talking about Tesla. So why are we talking about lithium? Why is lithium, uh, rather than Tesla, the investment idea for you? Well, Tesla is a, I think, a great company. They make great products. I can't comment on the valuation of the stock. It's very high if you compare it to other car companies, for example. So is it a car company? I don't know. But if you go back to the 1920s, there's a massive disruption happening to the car sector, the transportation sector and the utility sector. But if you just look at the car sector, if this were 1920, you would have a choice of 300 car companies you could invest in and maybe a half a dozen or a dozen oil companies to invest in. Over a very long period of time, the upstream fuel, the oil companies, were a better place to put your money than to try to pick which of the car companies were going to be the winners. And we ended up with you know the big three. So Tesla's priced to perfection, you know, battery companies like Panasonic and Samsung and LG Chem, it's a very competitive business, but the margin, the very substantial margins are available in the lithium, what I call the lithium fuel for the batteries which are feeding the cars. And because it's such a small industry that's growing, the, the, the lithium is forecast to grow 20% or so per year. That's five to seven times GDP. So the investment thesis is high, mar high sustainable margins in a mega trend, which is, you know, as we go from 2% penetration to 30% penetration, I see a 10 to 15 year mega trend or longer. And uh, companies that are developing new deposits have significant upside. And those who are currently producing should grow two and three and four times over the next kind of three five, seven years. The question I have in terms of, for viewers, this is a show about six to 24 month time frame in terms of investment. Where would you put your money in this space over that medium term time frame? That time frame is somewhat complicated, mm -hmm. right? Because um, I believe Albemarle should perform very well in that time frame because it's undervalued. It's, it's overall EV to EBITDA rating is lower than it has been historically. So to answer your question about a six to 24 month time frame, I do believe we're in a period, Albemarle stock has grew from 50 or 60 to 140 in, around this time last year, but it's fallen back to $85. But sentiment drove there's when they were at a dollar 140, their even EBITDA multiple was something like 20, whereas mm -hmm. historically mm -hmm. it was more like 15 or so. so when Bitcoin went up at the end of 2017, like a whole host of, there was a lot of sentiment and risk on um, into commodities, into lithium, partly the Trump uh, tax reform expectation, deregulation, and a lot of that went away in much of last year. So there was a lot of negative headwinds, which has brought Albemarle uh, down. So I believe within this six to 24 month time frame, we're likely to get another price spike. It may not happen until Q4 of this year or early next year or, or sometime next year, but I believe another price spike is coming. So t talk to me about this supply demand. Where is this demand for in, uh, electric vehicles for lithium coming from? Well, the demand is coming from the electric cars mm -hmm. that are, battery factories are being built 
significantly. So when Tesla announced their Gigafactory in 2014, they were one of four. There's an industry consultant called Benchmark Minerals and uh, that tracks this very carefully. So there were four megafactories, I think five gigawatts or, or, or more, I think mm -hmm. is their, um, their standard. There were four in 2014. There are now something like 71 battery megafactories, about two thirds of which are in China, right. but also in Korea. There's some in Poland and Hungary and other European countries. And there are some being built here today in the news SK Innovation is um, a Korean company that is building anywhere between 1.7 to 5 uh, gigawatt battery factory in Georgia. So batteries are driving this. These batteries are going into electric cars. Mm -hmm. So th that's what's driving the demand for lithium.